Good morning, and welcome to this week's midweek online service. And would you believe, although it's cool, it's starting to rain. And let us pray. Loving Father and friend, you have given us so much, and we are so blessed to know you. We thank you for the wonderful gift of life, with its joys and responsibilities. We thank you for for good health and daily food, and for work honestly done, and for all the truth we have learned and the good we have been able to achieve. Lord, forgive us for the times when we were unkind to one another or do or say unkind things. We are truly sorry and are grateful for the example of Jesus for forgiveness and salvation and for his presence with us always. And in the words Jesus taught taught the disciples, we pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join together in singing the first hymn, hymn number 622. We sing a love that sets all people free. This morning's readings are two of the most familiar bits of the New Testament. The first one is chapter 13 of the first book of 1 Corinthians. Although I've read and heard this many hundreds, perhaps even thousands of times, in reading through, I 
still found something new about it, namely the way in which the chapter is structured into four paragraphs. In the first, Paul says that whatever a person's gifts, if they have not love, then their life is empty. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am as nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. And in the second paragraph he enlarges on what love is. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And in the third paragraph, he says what love is not. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. And then in the final paragraph, he emphasizes that this is a reading for the mature adult Christian. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish things behind me. But now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three domain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And then our second reading is from chapter 22 of Matthew, verses 34 to 40, the greatest commandment. Hearing that Jesus had allowed the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together, one of them an expert in the law, tested him with this question, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. May God bless these readings to us. Amen. God's love. God's love for us is unconditional. Wow, that is a wonderful thing to know. No matter what, no ifs, no buts, we are confident in God's love for us. In our first reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, we read Paul's definition of love. And of course, this passage is often read at weddings. We also learn from Paul's letter to the Corinthians about what love is and what it is not. These days, sometimes the word love, love is used in many ways. We say we love something like we love our pets. We love a particular color. Mine happens to be purple. But what about human love for each other? Love for our parents, our partners, our spouses, brothers and sisters, 
or our children and grandchildren. We all need love. Paul tells us that love is kind and patient, but it's not envious or proud. And we heard in church a couple of weeks ago, love changes everything, and it certainly does. As Paul said, if we, are, if we don't love, we are nothing. We know God loves us because the Bible tells us this. And no matter where we turn to in the Bible, we can see this. And some of us may have learned in school or Sunday school the song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. I am weak, but he is strong. There was a song we sang away back in February, and sadly, we don't sing it very often. Do you remember the song, Jesus' love is very wonderful, with all the actions? So join me, and it'll warm us up. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful, oh, wonderful love. It's so high, you can't get over it. It's so low, you can't get under it. It's so wide, you can't get round of it. Oh, wonderful love. I'm sure that's warmed us up a little bit. In the second reading from Matthew, we heard that Jesus' reply when he was asked which was the greatest commandment. He said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. But the second one is equally important, is to love your neighbour as yourself. These encompasses all the laws and the prophets. We have heard that Jesus loves us unconditionally. But a minister once asked the congregation, do we tell God that we love him? I'll leave you with that thought. Amen. Lord, we know that the world is far from being the perfect place you would want it to be, and that your glorious kingdom, for whose coming we pray, seems far from reality. At times we feel that our prayers for others are feeble and ineffective and that the sufferings which we observe daily on our television screens and in our newspapers seem to increase by the day. Nevertheless, we continue to pray to you, knowing that the power of prayer can in mysterious ways bring about human deeds of relief, mercy and courage which inspire and challenge us all. We continue with our prayer of intercessions. At this time, we pray especially for people suffering from violations of human dignity, those who suffer from extreme poverty and starvation, those displaced from their homes who by dint of war have lost everything, particularly at this present time in Lebanon, and Gaza, Israel, Ukraine. Those who, in desperation, leave their homelands to travel as migrants. Those who suffer from human trafficking. Those who suffer sexual abuse or violence against women. Those with disabilities who are marginalized and find it hard to cope. Those in advanced countries who suffer digital violence and are driven towards suicide. Those in our own society who are neglected and unloved. In our comfortable lives here, let us not forget these many millions. And if any who suffer are personally known to us, let us take a few moments of silence to remember them and commit them to your care.
these prayers we make in Jesus' name, who came into our world as its saviour and whose example in our best moments we strive to follow. Amen. Now, to conclude our service this morning, we join together singing hymn number 519, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with every one of us today and forever. Amen. <laughs>